And welcome everyone to our Employment for Persons with Disabilities series, Exploring Employment. Um, we're really pleased today to be joined by Kathy McLeod from the Canadian Council on Rehabilitation and Work. Uh, and I'll let her sort of introduce herself a little more and, and um, talk about their agency. But I will say that um, the CCRW um, has been around for a while and they are definitely um, a leader in the field in connecting people with disabilities. Um, to employment, and not only that as a service, but they also are strong advocates in the community for building relationships, um, enabling people with disabilities to have a, a fair opportunity for employment. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Kathleen. Uh, now, Kathleen, um, I understand you're going to do the PowerPoint presentation, or do you want me to do it? Um, yes. Is it possible for me to share my screen? I will make you a co-host right now. Okay, perfect. And uh, just give me one second. All right, perfect. So there you go, Kathleen. Wonderful. Okay. So here we go. Let me know if you can see it. Yeah, I can just, see it. Okay, perfect. Mm, still. From the beginning. Okay, here we go. So I work for CCRW um, in our Kitchener office. We actually work out of the independent living center, independent living centers, um, Waterloo head office, and uh, Waterloo region head office. So. Um, that's where I am right now. We are working part-time remote and part-time in office. So um, I do get to be back here, which is very lovely. Um, I am the employment facilitator. And so I do all of the intakes for candidates that come through. Um, and we talk through um, employment goals and accommodation planning, which we can talk about a little bit later in the presentation. Um, but then also I am the person that that deals with some of the other services and supports that we provide in terms of training and um, assessments and things like that. Um, I have a team of, we're a team of three. And so there's two other people that work alongside me and they are job developers. And um, their role is really to make connections in the community with um, employers and to educate them on being disability confident and disability friendly um, and inclusive employers. We have um, some different education pieces for employers that we can provide. And um, it really is about helping to um, create an environment for employers that they can, they feel that they can come to us with their questions and their concerns in a non judge judgmental way so that we can start changing some of those um, biases about disability and we can start educating on um, on ways that we can be supporting and accommodating people in the workplace. So they also support candidates well on the job and they can support through a lot of different ways, but we'll get to that a little later. So our mission is to promote and support meaningful, long-term and equitable employment for people with disabilities. We are currently in a pilot project. So Partners uh, 2.0 is a little different than what our partners program used to be. It started in um, December of 2019 and we're um we have extended our pilot project until the end of june um and then hopefully we are in the process of having that contract renewed so we will be around but those details um, are not quite firmed up yet um so to our goal in Partners 2.0 is to support small business to become more accessible and to secure the talents of persons with disabilities and to also help skilled job seekers with disabilities get connected with local businesses. 
So we work really as connectors and resources between the employer and the employee. So we aim to increase a candidate's employer networks by helping them tap into a hidden labor market. And our goal is to support successful matches to available jobs. So our job developers work very closely with employers. We've worked with over 300 um, employers in this pilot project to talk to them about their job openings, what the types of roles are. They're very edu um, educated on the industries in Kitchener-Waterloo and the industries that are um, working right now in the pandemic. Obviously some are struggling a little bit more than others. So um, their job is to really be educated on what's going on in the labor market and, um, and to help connect our employer relationships with our employee and our candidate slash employee kind of contacts there. Our services um, and benefits to a candidate. So um, we have increased access to employer networks and the hidden job market or the hidden labor market. So the hidden labor market is really um, that piece that people don't always think about, but employers are always thinking about when they're going to be hiring next. And there's a period of time where they may know that a job is coming up, but they haven't put it out into the world yet. Or there's a lot of, there's also a lot of small businesses that don't really know how to market themselves out in the public forum um, to look for potential job um, seekers to come and find um, their opportunity. So a lot of people put help wanted signs out in their front window to look for people. Um, a lot of people kind of go through their own networks when they're looking for hiring a person. And so we can make those connections to employers that maybe don't have um, the Indeed job application um, opportunities that you would see by just looking online. Access to skills training based on local trends and hiring needs identified by businesses. So we have $500 of industry specific training that we can provide our candidates when they come through. So this is very specific to jobs. So based on the um, requirements of a job or based on um, the components of a job when you're hired that you feel like you need more support with, um, we can put you through specific training. Um, that could be first aid, that could be smart serve, that could be um, mental health first aid, that could be forklift training, um, it could be security guard training. It has to be linked to jobs in the industry that are currently hiring or um, accessible in the labor market right now on a larger scale um, because we want to make sure that these training situations that we put you in are going to result in either um, you're being more successful in your job or you being able to um, get and retain a job in a certain field. We can also provide accommodation and disclosure support so we can help with planning and workforce implementation. So when a candidate comes through and they're looking for a job, we can support them by talking to them about um, their how their disability affects their everyday life um, and the types of um, supports that they might need on the job. A lot of the times um, when someone comes to us, they're not quite sure what types of things that they can ask for because accommodations are things that can be a little tricky. That conversation um, is very nuanced. And um, if you would like more information on that, I can provide you with some more information um, at a later date, but um, we can support through kind of collaborating on some of those things that might um, 
be struggles for you and then come up with creative problem solving um, solutions. And then also um, working with our assessments, we have occupational therapists that can go out to your workstation, assess your workspace and make sure that you have all the equipment and devices that you would need, as well as give you tips on how to do your job more efficiently and um, safer if that's also something that comes into play as well with um, stretches or um, different techniques that maybe you could try to help as well. Um, and we can also support you in having that disclosure conversation. So we can walk with you through what things you might want to say to an employer in the beginning stages or um, how to address certain things as they come up. Um, and we're always here to have that conversation. Disclosure doesn't have to happen in the beginning. It can happen at any point throughout your time as an employee, but we do suggest that it happens sooner rather than later. So you have the support that you need. So um, we match candidates to employment opportunities, and this may include um, supported or, or matching candidates to employment opportunities may include supported or accommodated job interviews. So if you're feeling like you need some extra support around the interview process, we can come with you. Obviously not in, there's not a lot of in-person meetings that are happening right now, um, but we could be a part of that virtual job interview um, in hopefully better times. Um, we will be able to go on site with you and do that interview in person. Um, we can help with skills promotion, like I talked about with that training piece, um, and we can also offer a wage subsidy. So we can offer a 10 week long wage subsidy. Everyone that's eligible for our program is eligible for the wage subsidy and it, um, it covers six weeks of 100% uh, paid wages. And then the last four weeks is 50% covered wages. So with that, that's a, a really good way for us to um, really sell a candidate in a position and then also give them time to get set up to have all of the resources and things put in place for them in that first three months to be able to be successful. So that's kind of why we have that wage subsidy, especially right now in this current labor market. Um, it really sets people apart because um, there's a lot of job seekers out there in this area. There's a lot of people who are looking and so it can be quite a competitive job market. And this just gives um, people with disabilities a little bit of an edge. We are always looking for long-term meaningful employment for candidates. So we would never put someone in a position that is less than six months long. We want it to be a job where you're going to be able to um, be in it for a long amount of time to, to gain those skills, to put on your resume, to be able to, to job search you know, down the line for something else, if that's what you you please. But then also, um, if you wanted to stay, we hope that that we can set you up successfully so that that can be the case as well. So our criteria is um, a little different than normal because of coronavirus, but I'll get to those specifics um, a little later down the down the slide. Um, so the first point is a person who self-identifies as having a disability. So this is really broad for us. Um, a disability is anything that impairs someone's ability to do their job to the best of their ability, that requires them to, and maybe impairs is not the right word, but requires them to be able to um, need specific um, pieces in order to successfully um, navigate their job in a certain way. So um, that could be someone with a um, chronic migraine, that could be someone with mental health conditions, that could be someone with um, a 
short-term disability. That could be someone with episodic disabilities where it comes and goes like vertigo. That could be someone who has vision loss or um, is hearing impaired. So it's very, um, it, it kind of encompasses a very large range of people. And we're really trying to educate the public because there's a lot of people that could fit this category that maybe don't think that they that they could. Um, whereas like people with ADHD, that they fit in this category, people with learning disabilities, they fit in this category. Um, people who have cancer or diabetes, um, they can fit in this category because um, they may need more breaks or they may need support around like administering their medication at certain times. So they need to be able to do that safely in an environment where um, they don't feel like they're being set apart from everybody else. Um, so another criteria is being unemployed or underemployed and are actively job seeking. So at this, um, underemployed technically means to us um, that you have less than 20 hours of paid work a week. Um, and so that can be pretty broad as well. Um, and actively job searching basically means that you are out there putting your resume out, you are trying to um, be finding work, you're motivated to look and you have the skills to do so. Um, and we ask that candidates have a resume and are comfortable with completing an independent job search. So for us, um, an independent job search just means that um, you're, you're capable of filling out an online job application. You're capable of um, looking for, for work in, in different ways. Um, and you it's okay to have a support person to help you do that, but, um, but that you have the support needed to be able to do that independent job search. And alternatively, candidates can be supported in their job search by a partnering agency. So we do um, have uh, community partners that we can partner with in the EO kind of sector. So that's Employment Ontario. So we can work alongside Agilic, um, the Working Centre, Lutherwood, um, and we can do joint supports with them. So that just means that if they have certain um, funding or supports that we can't provide, then we can go um, together and they can provide the things that they can provide that we can't and we would provide the things that they can't provide and then you're getting a more well-rounded service so um, there are times when we know that a situation is going to be better if we partner with another agency because that's going to help you with funding or something else that you might need and then that um, can really work very well um, in that sort of situation. Currently, um, we are working with our funder to address the EI requirements. So on a regular basis, um, without you know, the situation that we're in currently, um, EI is a requirement that um, a candidate not use EI within the, the past three to five years. Um, the reason for that is because our funding is a federal, we are a federally funded program. So our funding comes through the Opportunities Fund. And that is specifically the pot of funding that also um, is attached to employment insurance and CERB. And employment insurance includes things like uh, parental leave, short-term disability. Um, and so anyone that has used that pot of funds um, comes up in our system when we put all of our information through as ineligible. Um, as of right now, we are in a situation where um, I'm sure you can probably imagine there are a lot of people who have used that pot of funding recently. And so we have been granted a little bit of leeway in that situation because of that. So um, there is a lot more wiggle room in terms of our eligibility when it comes to EI. And so anyone has been asked to be coming through um, to see if they would be eligible because there's a lot more 
um, ways for us to help get people eligible. Um, because we want to make sure that people who have used uh, CRB and EI over the last little bit are still having the same chances and opportunities to get jobs as anyone else. So we work to make sure that it is the right fit. It's very important for us that we make sure that jobs that we're putting our candidates in are um, playing to their strengths and their skills and that we're making sure that it is um, a safe place for them to be. So we don't want, if someone has had a back injury and they're trying to get a stocking position where they're lifting heavy boxes, we would be advocating for that person to look for a different job because that could re-injure their back and cause them more harm than good to, to have that specific position. Or we would try to negotiate maybe a different place in that employment um, in that place of employment than the stocking position in the back. So we work to try to make sure that any position that our candidates have is beneficial um, for you in, in all ways that are important. And then providing opportunities to enhance your skills, accommodation planning, identifying employer needs, and providing training and resources to employers and candidates for accommodations. So in our program, um, we do have a process that we have to go through. So when a candidate comes through, there are several meetings with me in the beginning to get to know our services and to understand um, a, goal, a candidate's goals and skills. We really want to get to know um, the intricacies of what you're looking for because it's important when you're job seeking um, to really think about the um, the times of day you want to work and the hours that are are good for you and your schedule and and your needs, because um, if you end up doing a full time job and then that ends up being a really bad experience, it can be hard for someone getting back into the job force to be able to um, kind of put yourself out there again. So we want this time to be a time where we can, the, these meetings, this time that we have in these meetings to be, um, to get to know you and to understand all of those pieces really well so that we put you in the best possible positions. And then candidates complete an active job search and they send us a job log for four weeks. So it's important that we see those job logs for a lot of different reasons, but um, one of them is because um, we meet two to three times and I ask for job you know, job goals and what you're looking for, but there are times that people forget, you know, and when you're looking at a job um, posting online and you see something that's really exciting to you and maybe it's a job that you didn't think about when we were talking when I see that on a job log then I can be like oh wow we have contacts in these areas that I never would have known if you didn't send me this job log and then it opens up dialogue for more industry specific jobs and it takes the job search in different directions so that's why it's really important, but it's also important for us um, to see that you're really motivated and you really want that job. We work with, uh, right now, we have about 130 people on our roster. So there's a lot of people that are looking for work. And so it's important for us to see that you're really actively motivated for that job because it means when we put you into an inter like when we use our contacts to try to set up an interview for you, we know that you're gonna go to that interview. We know that you're gonna be actively um, trying to um, get that job in, in all of the best ways during that interview process that you're gonna show up and you're gonna be prepared and on time. And so it just helps us to really um, be positive that this is the right time and the right fit for you when we set you up for a job. And there is a potential to access skills-based training and employer matches, which is kind of what we've been talking about this whole time. But um, like I said before, we do have, um, when we see that a person is actively job searching, we make sure that we put in that effort as well. So we 
go to our contacts that we've made and we try to find those openings as well in our hidden job market. So um, that's why it's important for us to see that motivation. Is there any questions? So we can open it up now if anyone has a question, just unmute your microphone. I do have a couple of questions in the, uh, in the chat. Um, I guess first off, Kathleen, what would be the best way to get a hold of you? Do you have, um, usually at the end of a PowerPoint, do you have a, like an email or a phone number? Or? Oh, right. Um, yes. So I do I'm have- I'm wondering if you, could, if you could put it in the chat mm -hmm. um, for everyone to see. That way, anybody who wants it could copy and paste it or write it down. Yeah, absolutely. Let me just see here. So the phone number is a little difficult just because I'm in the office part time. Um, so I don't have, there are times when you're not going to be able to get through to me through the phone number in my office. And when I'm on, um, when I'm working, but in my home, I use my personal phone number um, that's blocked. So it doesn't show when I call people and they can't call me because it's a personal phone number. Um, so it's better to email me in this time. Um, hopefully I will be back in the office full time um, soon, but all the while we're in the red, I will be part-time remote. And I mean, I guess people could also visit the website if they wanted to read more or learn more, then I'm sure from there they can find uh, some local content information as well. So uh, one question I have here uh, says, I want to disclose my disability in the interview so I can get the proper accommodation. But I've heard that once you leave the, once you leave the room, employers can do anything they want. And I am afraid that they would just uh, deny me the job. Mm. Yeah. That is, it is a very tricky situation in terms of when to um, disclose. When it is something that um, is very visible though, um, if it is something that's very visible and they, they, you walk in and, and maybe they see that you have a, a cane or they see that you're in a wheelchair, um, it can be a really positive situation where you can, you can use that to talk about all of the ways that you've been innovative in your life and found ways to be successful um, and talk about really the positive things that you bring to a job. So really make it a positive um, piece um, and, and that it's not going, we, you can talk about it, how it's not going to be a barrier. Um, if it is something where you can kind of be in an interview and maybe you don't have to disclose right away. Um, sometimes it is better to disclose when you have that job offer that you've signed and it's that first day of work and you want to talk to your employer about it to get those pieces um, that you need that are important for you to be successful. Um, so it, it really is based on how you're feeling um, and how you like how you how comfortable you are in putting that out there um, in the very beginning and we have very skilled hr professional job developers so they are very capable of being a part of those conversations with you and walking through the types of wording choices that you can use um, that will really showcase how um, successful you can be in the role regardless of what your disability is, which is, is what we want to be focusing on. I hope that answers your question. Okay. Is there anybody I've got, I've got another question here. Actually, it's from me, but um, I just wanted to give anybody else the opportunity if somebody else had a question right now. Hi, Kathleen. Oh. I, I did have a quick question. Um, so if we had a, um, a consumer who we thought would be a good candidate for your some of your program and supports um, would the best way be just to connect directly with CCRW or 
as a support agency? Do they need to go through ODSP or how does, what's the best way to get in touch with you guys? Yeah, so they can come straight to, um, they can come straight to us. You can refer them. We have a referral form that um, we use for community partners. And um, they can, if there's any sort of services that, they're, that they also want to be a part of as well, they can let me know and I can connect them to my contacts. We have um, a lot of contacts with community partners in, in all different areas. So if they want to do like joint services with ODSP service providers, we can send them to those people as well. Um, and work in collaboration with them. So that is um, an option as well. Okay, I've got a couple questions here. Actually, first of all, Kathleen, I was wondering, um, would you be able to maybe stop the screen share that we can all see each other maybe a little yeah, up close and personal? There we go. Now we're not so tiny. Um, so I have a question here that says, uh, are you a service provider? I have only had a caseworker at ODSP. Um, how can we get a service provider? So I guess similar to what Sherry asked, but obviously somebody who wants to work with you, but they've only spoken with somebody at ODSP, so. Yeah, of course. Um, so we are not connected to ODSP. Um, we can work with people on ODSP, but um, we there are specific service providers through um, th that are, that use um, similar um, models, I guess, and that are connected with ODSP. So um, a caseworker would refer you to a certain agency if you wanted to use a service provider. So there is um, the job center, there is, um, I think there's a couple different options. Um, and I can provide you the information for those specific people. The difference between CCRW and an ODSP service provider is that they are able to work with you for three years, which is fantastic because it means that they can kind of follow you throughout that time period. And if you need to have support um, within the three years, they can jump right in and do that. Whereas with us, we are kind of in the short term in the very beginning or at a crucial time in your employment. So, um, and we can only be working with a candidate that is employed for three months. So that's the, the kind of different variation. Um, but a lot of ODSP service providers don't have the funding that we have, which is where we partner, and they can provide that longstanding support, and then we can come in and support in the very beginning with all of those onboarding pieces that you might need. Yeah, I think that's an important differentiation to make. Um, so, so just for those of you who maybe missed our ODSP presentation last week, um, ODSP handles um, sort of your income support and helps to offset or provide incentives with employment supports. And they will refer you to an agency to help you get a job, um, but they don't, but they don't, it doesn't matter to them where you get a job or what service you seek. So if you chose to go to CCRW, it would have the same impact on your ODSP as if you were to go to a, a, an agency that was referred by them. Um, and as Kathleen showed, there are some differences, but um, so certainly you have to decide what's, uh, what's a priority to you um, for sure before making that decision, but it's good to talk to both uh, both parties for sure. Yeah. Um, I have a comment here from somebody who says, when I, when I have to talk about my disability, I make sure that the employers know that I can do stuff. Just, I have to have more time to do certain things. Right. Yeah, what absolutely. That's fantastic. That's a really good way to put it. And sometimes, you know, I mean, employers will want to know the specifics, but sometimes if you use simple language too, right? Like uh, I know in my experience, if you go in and, and something simple like that, like oh, I just need some more time to do things, employers will be like, oh, okay. Um, if you get too much into detail early on, um, it might be a little bit confusing, right? But if you just sort of um, keep it a bit more simple in the beginning, that helps too, so yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. One of the things that I haven't said, but is new, um, is that we're able to support people who are already hired as well. So if someone is, because of coronavirus, we've had a lot of situations where people normally would be in the office, but are now having to have remote offices, or their roles have had to change, and they've had to take on different duties than what they've normally been able to do, and they've needed support around how to do those things, um, because they've never had the opportunity to do those tasks before and so we can support candidates who are in situations like that. Um, we can also support someone who is in a job but is really trying to advocate for themselves to maybe get a promotion in the company and to use our wage subsidy to kind of incentivize their their um, supervisor to kind of let them give them a try in that role. Um, so there's a lot of different options that our services can kind of creatively um, come alongside people with disabilities in this time to support. And so um, just keep us in mind if there's ever uh, one of your friends or people that you know in your life um, that might uh, be it, where it might be beneficial for us to come alongside and support, then please let them know about us. So I think. Oh, okay, cool. Um, the other thing that I was I was curious about, and this system comes from me, um, and it sort of surrounds the whole um, idea of virtual, uh, the virtual world that we sort of live in right now, and and how the, the how that's impacted employment for people with disabilities. Um, obviously, um, it's provided certain opportunities and access for people who might not have otherwise had the opportunity. So I'm wondering if just if you sort of have any experience with that. Do you find that you're connecting people more well, with virtual so opportunities it. or? But Friday. Yeah, we've definitely had um, a few opportunities that have been virtual and we've had some um, really interesting job fairs come up as well. Um, there's a company HGS, which I think is HGS. Um, that does yeah, okay. remote work and it's all customer service based. We also have yeah, Majoral right that. now where it's all customer yeah, service based and it is mostly remote. Um, so we have some interesting opportunities that have come up. Um, it is a situation where right now um, you have to really have, for us, um, it's it's um, based on the skills that come through. So um, there are waves of people that kind of come through and they want uh, food service or, or customer service in a, a um, retail kind of environment. Um, so we, when we do have those uh, people that come through and want those office jobs, we do have them available, but, um, but we are open to all different industries. We have contacts in all different industries and um, are really trying to just diversify as much as possible right now with, with the types of contacts we do have. And I've got another question here. It says, I've had roadblocks in finding employment because of my complex physical barriers. Could a service provider be of an assistant to me? Well, of course, I know this, so. 40 more hours to, yeah you know, definitely um so it's it's something that we could definitely look into having an occupational therapist come and uh, look at your workstation that you might have and figure out what some of those um solutions might be and they are very informative when when they're there and they can come up with some solutions so um it's always it's always worth coming and talking to us and, and letting us know what types of opportunities you want to try in the workforce and for us to really brainstorm whether those things might be possible with some of the limitations but um but we would be we would always be honest with you about our capacity and what and what our our employers capacities are at at the moment um but there's there's possibilities out there for you have you ever had um, any situation where you help to fund or help to advocate for somebody to have um, a support yeah, worker in the workplace? 
Yeah, so we do have yeah, we have right. funding for a job coach. We have eight hundred dollars. Each candidate that's eligible has about eight hundred dollars uh, that they can use for a job coach. Now this is temporary and it's not a an immediate fix, but um, we can have people who are there for forty hours um, in the initial stages of you starting your job to really support you in that. Um, I haven't. Um, advocated for long-term supports, but we could definitely do that and look at what sort of opportunities are out there for you. Okay, awesome. Well, I don't see any other questions coming in right now. Um, so I'll give one last shout out if somebody has something, but um, other but yeah, than that. Yeah, all good there, so that's good. Oh, then I see you've got some background noise there, Kathy. But yeah, I'll catch yeah. I thought you were, I thought you worked in a quiet office. Later. <laughs> I do. My colleague is working with me today. We work together one day of the week, and it's today. <laughs> so. All right. Well, you know what? I want to thank you so much. Um, it was a really informative presentation. And I know both personally and professionally, we've worked together. And uh, I can vouch for the supports that you guys provide. Um, you do a really great job. So I encourage anyone to reach out, go to the website, ccrw.org to learn more or email Kathleen directly, K McLeod, M-A-C-L-E-O-D at ccrw.org. Um, so thank you very much for joining us today. And I will look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. It was nice to meet you all. <laughs>